Hello, everyone. D. Alfred Ostrowski here. Theory of Computation, Lecture 9. Welcome. In this recording, I'm going to be addressing context-sensitive grammars. What's the difference between a context-sensitive and context-free? Real quick review. We know Context-free grammars have a single non-terminal on the left-hand side of the assignment. And any combination of non-terminals and terminals on the right-hand side. Okay, That's the primary distinction. Our classic examples of context sensitive. You may see these examples online, right? A N B N. Well, this is context free. If I add the C N, where N is greater than zero, I have a context sensitive grammar. I can use the pumping lemma for context free languages, and I can pump out of the language. That's a separate discussion. A sufficiently long word relative to M. I got two points, and I can. I can pump with an A and B and, but not certainly not with a C and. Here, I'm interested in addressing some of the mechanics and the differences between that and a context-sensitive grammar. Okay, that's a classic context-sensitive grammar. But let me go through a problem that is not as well publicized: the word duplication language. Where I have W followed by a W, a word followed by the same exact word just following that, right? Where in this case, I can say A, B, where A, or I'm sorry, the word is comprised of any number of A's and B's, right? Clean this up here. One or more, right? And I know what's in my language and not in the language. Unlike the palindrome, I could say, B, B, A, B, and B, B, A, B. Okay, let me give a simplified example, but I encourage you to work through a couple different variations to explore the nuances and most importantly, make sure that your grammar doesn't allow any languages that aren't in this language slip through. But for example purpose, let's look at A, B, A, B, A, B, 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 A, B, B, right? That's my word and a duplicate of that word. It takes some of the basic mechanics, kind of balancing what we know with the palindrome problem, where I would have equal letters on each side that I can recursively move through. Let me just start with the derivation here, and I'm going to generate the grammar as we go along. But I'm going to give you a starting point for that grammar here, and I'm going to make it a modification of one of the constructs that we're already familiar with. So let's start with the solution for this. I'm going to say A S non-terminal A. I'm going to say B S non-terminal B. And I'm going to epsilon lambda. OK, that's going to get me out of it. So that's my starting point. Let's build as we go along and look at the mechanics. Let's say A B B that I'm looking for. Erase that. S goes to ASA, non-terminal A, I'm sorry. Let me erase that and we'll clean it up, make these representations a little bit better here. ASA. And then I can derive S. I can say S is assigned to BSB. I'm put that inside, replace that. BSBA. And I can continue and go to A, B, B, S, B, B, A. Well, you're saying this is the palindrome problem. Well, to this point it is. So I have to figure out a way. Okay, I need to figure out, and this is kind of my workspace on the bottom here. 
give you the mechanics of what I'm trying to accomplish. I go to M epsilon, I'm going to be left with that. So what I need to do is shift the letters. And I can't start from the right because I need to I need to have some kind of identifier of the starting or ending point. And the best way to do that is work with my non-terminals. I know that my word here, my first word is already identified. It's identified as terminals. So let's do the matching on the left-hand side, corresponding of a terminal or end terminal. What I'm going to do is take these one by one and shift. And I'm going to rename them. I'm going to shift this over. I'm going to shift B and B and shift that to a B1B, one B, this being the original B on the left-hand side, and I'm gonna say B1 to A. And then I'm gonna shift the A over, and these are unchanged, right? And then I'm gonna say B1. And then I'm gonna do another match going back to the left and shift, shift, shift. I'm gonna do it three times, but I should set up my grammar to do it unlimited infinite amount of times because this is an infinite language, right? So, so how am I going to set this up? I'm going to continue on with the B, B of this nature that I'm matching with the B and it could be the key point. I have four variations, right? Terminal B, non-terminal B, terminal B, non-terminal A, and corresponding with the non-terminal A, B, and A. So let me write that out. That would be with a B, What I need to do is bounded by that B, I need to make another association here, right? And I need to replace this with a B and a B1. Okay, that's this B moving over to that B, right? And let me write the other corresponding. So if I have the B, a B would be a B B A uh, with that shift, right? And then I'm going to do it with the A in front, A A B B A B And I'm going to this is going to expand, right? So this is going to be a little bit more uh this is not going to be a complete comprehensive but the key point is to get the mechanics out of this right so i would have a b of that nature right and i would have a b and i'm marking that i'm marking that to move it over So in this case, how would the result would be? I would have a B, A, B, B. This would go to epsilon, and I would match the B and put a B, uh, B, 1, A of that nature, right? I'm going to take that B, move it all the way to the right. I can't move it on in, uh, any further. So. In this case, if I take a B1A, and I'm tailoring a little bit, but you want to keep in all the other considerations here, right? So I would have an AB1. I'm shifting it over to the right. I can't shift it any anymore. And I'm always going to match on the left-hand side of the two non-terminals. That's going to give me the solution, right? So again, I'm trying to consider the fact that I'm moving it over to the right, and I need to consider the fact that it could have been an A 
as well with A and B. In this case, it would have an A, A1, B, A1, right? So in this case, I'm going to follow through with my example, and this can be somewhat expansive, right? So B, B, A1. Now that's complete, okay? Key point, I'm not going to have any non-terminals. It could be C, D, E, F, G, right? But I'm making it consistent with the subscript. The A subscript 1 or B subscript 1 is in transition to the right. And if I don't have it on the right-hand side of the left of my rule description, then I know that this will never move over. This is this is a, in its final place. And how do I know when I have a final solution? Well, I can take all my A or Bs with subscripts and mash them to terminals, right? But I'm not gonna have a complete derivation until I have the complete terminals. But I need to ensure that that second word is inverted back, push and pop from a stack functional equivalent, right? So let me continue. I have an, a B, 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 and that's gonna shift just in the same fashion, right? A, B, B, and it'll give me a B, one, A, one. Pretty simplified. And I can put in extra rules in this case, A, B, B, sorry. A B, B, sorry again. B, B, B1, and I can do that shift there and replace that with a B, B1, B1, and all the variations of that. So you can see the mechanics here. B1, B1, A1. Then I can just say my A1 goes to an A, and B1 goes to uh, a B. And I think you have the basic mechanics here of the solution, okay? Uh, I don't see any, because this would go to the ABB, and then I would have the uh, uh, the A would be eventually shifted over, right? The A would be eventually shifted over. may confuse it a little bit here. Let me rewrite this. Confuse shifting with the left with shifting with the right. So I I would have ended like this with the B1 to the far right. And then I would have A, B, B. 
with the AB shifted over, and then I would have the ABB could be matched to uh, non-terminal A, B1, B1. And then I would have non, all non-terminals And to ensure that this doesn't happen prematurely, let's say I have a derivation into a different word. I might be interested in converting it to a A2 or B2, right? Final amendment, okay, to finish the thought here, because there is a risk here if I have A1 going to an A, and I have an A1 at any given time, it could match back to one of these rules if it is sufficiently long. So instead of A1, I'm going to make this A2 going to the, non, the uh, terminal A and terminal B, and I'm going to get to A2 by checking with our our initial terminals. That's gonna put me back at that original word again, right? So let's see how that's gonna work out and we can explore all the variations, but I'm just gonna give you the basic idea. But as you can see, this is getting a lot bigger than what we planned, but we have to cover for all the instances here, right? So if I say A, B, B, which I'm gonna end up at this point with an A1, B1, B1, all right? <clears throat> I can't just say convert my subscripted not terminals to terminals, even though it looks like it's pretty close. Because if I did that, it could let in other rule languages such as A, B, 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 A, B. Why? Because the B could go to a terminal B on the A1, let's say back here, all right? So how would I, I can bound that again by, what's our reference point of the words is the existence of a terminal. So if I, if I say a B, A1 on the left-hand side, okay? Which is my first one. Then I could go to a, a B, A2, right? And, correspondingly. So I can have a, uh, a to a B1 and a, 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 a B to A1, A to A1 and so forth. All the, I have three more variations of that. And then once I have an A2, if I have an A2, A1, then that can take me to an A2, A2. And I'm not shifting, I'm just converting them over. I'm converting these over to twos, Okay, already having uh, taken effect. And I know that I'm not going to have at the start of that next word, I don't have it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to be set until I make that final transition. Remember, I'm moving everything incrementally from left to right. And the final transition that's going to take me there is this transition of the B, uh, with the final non-terminal. This is saying, okay, it's kind of like my third step if I were to look at it from the perspective of a transition diagram. So I make that transition, I move it to A2s and then A2 to A and B, and then I would have not just a solution tailored for this, but one that hopefully would address the entire word problem. So work it out, play with it, and this is deceptively simple, right? A little more complicated, a little more evolved than 
perhaps what you would expect, but a great problem nonetheless, and it gives you an idea of the mechanics and the power of unrestricted grammars and context sensitive languages. Thanks for listening. Any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Take care. All right.